good day to all of you so till now we have been uh, discussing at length on the topic of modeling so we have been able to uh, get the state equations from the physical uh, model of a system and in this case the system is a dc dc converter the dc dc converter being a switched system so we went through the process of uh, uh, circuit averaging wherein we get the average large signal model we get the uh, steady state model the small signal model and uh, these are the models that you will eventually use for the control purposes and uh, that is going to be the focus of our uh, discussion uh, in the next few uh, classes too. So, what do we have till now? So, we have now let me represent uh, the DC DC converter in this fashion. It has it has a power input it has a power output. So, most of the cases the power input we have been calling till now V g which is uh, the supply voltage the unregulated supply voltage DC voltage and the output is V naught and most of the cases that is what you want to control you have a control input and the control input is in the form of duty cycle this is the duty ratio and there is also another signal output notice that i have been using this double arrow for uh, vg and v naught indicating that they are handling power uh, there is an energy flow there the uh, control input D and sensed outputs. It could be a voltage sensing which is basically sensing the output voltage you have a sensor and then um, feed it uh, at this uh, point. So, this only contains an information it does not have power flow information about the output voltage. Now, this is what we would be using for feeding it back for controls purposes. So, this plant here can represent any DC DC converter. So, this DC DC converter is being represented mathematically in this form. And the output y which is equal to C x plus D u. <coughs> Now, from this you can also obtain various transfer functions. If you want to do the classical um, uh, controller design based on root locus or body plots, the transfer function, what is the transfer function that you are interested in? The control is at this point, this variable actually controls and what should it control? It should control whatever that we want to actually control is being uh, sensed and sent out. So, this could be a representation of let us say V naught or if it is a boost converter and sometimes you want to control the input current of the boost converter it could be I g. So, if this is going to be your controlled output y then we need to get the transfer function of the output to the control input. So, what you essentially would need is V naught by D of S. 
and if you are controlling for the small signal models uh, that is the uh, small signal deviations in the neighborhood of the normal operating point or steady state operating point you need the transfer function v not hat by d hat Laplace transform. So, this is obtainable from the state equation which we have been able to develop um, as a result of the discussions in the last few classes. So, from here on how do we go about? We will be developing a way or a method to design the controller for such a plant. So, before that let us see how we will represent the plant uh, in a simulation uh, toolbox or an environment like MATLAB. So, that you will be able to get a uh, few more uh, outputs or insight into the plant uh, by uh, plotting the various uh, uh, characteristics. So, now let us take for example, let us go to a MATLAB environment. like this. So, here I have opened in front of me uh, the MATLAB workspace it is a MATLAB 7.7 .7. and let us see how we go about representing the plant that we have been able to model in the last few classes and uh, see um, uh, and see the result in the MATLAB workspace and how we manipulate the data. So, let us open a file first. So, uh, I have you I am using a G, G editor this is a Linux system. So, this is a text editor you could use any text editor for, for that matter probably notepad or so. Now, uh, let us let us uh, write down the model for model for a non isolated boost converter. This is the uh, model that we have been um, uh, discussing in the last few classes. So, I think you will be familiar with that. So, let us write it with few comments so that you will be able to understand. You clear all variables and also clear the screen and let us display. I hope you are familiar with MATLAB or Octave. plant parameters so the values of the plant parameters in this case the plant parameter plant is nothing but the dc uh, uh, boost converter um, let us write that down so vg vg is 15 volts it is a voltage unit duty cycle the steady nominal duty cycle is 0 0.4 no units for that. So, we say this is the uh, steady state duty ratio. Then we need to know uh, the value of the inductor L. So, inductor L 2 milli Henry. So, I will write it as 2 E minus 3 Henry's. I am using the person sign 
notice that that is uh, person will comment out the um, uh, uh, alphanumeric characters that come after that percent is used for commenting use it freely when you are writing your programs MATLAB programs. So, the C and let us say it is a 10 microfarad which is 10 E minus 6 in farads. The resistance value that we had connected across that 100 ohms Now, this these are the parameters of the circuit, is not it? We, um, uh, we have now given some numbers to this. Let us see what is the steady state model. Steady state model of the boost converter. Let us give A the A matrix. We will write down the A, B, C, and D matrices. We will call the steady state model as A S, B S, and C S matrices. Probably you could write out the given by A S, B S, C S, and D S matrices. So, A s equals now go back to what we have learned in the last class. A s matrix 0 and you have 1 minus uppercase D that is the steady state value D. This is the uh, first row. So, you put a row delimiter, then type in the next row 1 minus D by C. This is the second row first element. R into C. So, this is the second row. So, this is your A s matrix, B s matrix, let us fill that up, C s, D s matrices. Just in case you are having a doubt, you want to check this out, you can just copy all these and paste it in copy and paste it in the workspace ok and uh, 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 and in entering it the value should have been entered. So, you see A s matrix would have been entered and such calculated and entered. So, you do the exercise for the other matrices also. Recall the B, B matrix had 3 columns each for one of the inputs, but here in the steady state the D hat input is 0, the I z hat input is also uh, uh, I z hat input and the VG, VG input uh, is the one which will be considered the uppercase VG and the uppercase IZ. So, you have 1 by L 0 V naught by oh sorry 1 by L 0, next row 0 minus 1 by C. 
So, if you want to put it as a 3 by 3, uh, 3 by 3 matrix, the D input portion is 0, you just make that 0. Then the C, C S matrix, there are two possible outputs. The voltage across the capacitance V C gives you V naught. So, V naught is one possible output and the boost converter I G sometimes you control the input current, the current inductor current in the input that is also a possible uh, um, output. So, uh, we have two uh, rows possible uh, to accommodate the possible outputs 0 1 which means V naught is the output there and the second row 1 and 0 saying that I G or I, I L is the output. There is no direct feed through from the input and therefore, this is a 0 uh, matrix like this. So, we have the steady state model. So, this is the steady state model which you can use for getting the input output relationships as we have been discussing till now. We can get from this what is the steady state V naught. So, the steady state V naught is minus C s first row of C s first row all columns that is what it would mean into inverse of inverse of the A matrix into the B S matrix which column. So, you are taking all rows column 1 into V G this is the B the B 1 column into V G. So, this would give you V naught and what is I g? The steady state I g is again minus C s which row? Second row all columns into inverse of A s the A matrix multiplied by the B s matrix the specific column that you are choosing is again V g. So, this is the steady state uh, values of V naught and I g with respect to the input V g as uh, given uh, as given in the specification here this can be calculated and be calculated and used for the small signal model because the small signal model the uh, A and B matrices use the steady state values. So, next let us try to find the small signal model of the boost converter. So, let us write that down. So, let us give the nomenclature small uh, low, lower case A, B and C. So, lower case A. So, it has two rows 0 minus 1 minus D by L. Then the second row 1 minus D by C and minus 1 by R by C. This also will give you the A will give you the 1 by R C. A matrix then the B matrix, B matrix is having is having uh, 3 columns as we saw. Look back to the uh, discussion of last class for the various elements of the matrix 0 minus 1 by C C. 
So, this gives you the B matrix. Observe here the B matrix. B matrix is having a steady state component V naught here, which will be taken from the steady state model computation. There is also a steady state value which is needed in the B matrix uh, IG, which will be taken from the steady state model computation from here. Then the C matrix, let us say that you uh, are right now interested in only um, output voltage 1, then the D matrix is this. Now, let us um, uh, display these uh, matrices uh, a bit more uh, uh, easily compre uh, comprehensible manner. Uh, therefore, let us give some labels. The U label which will give you the definitions of the inputs. So, V G is an input, I Z is an input, D is an input in that order. Y labels Y labels within quotes, V naught, I G, they both are the uh, outputs. Y labels, and then you have the X labels. That is the state. We have a. So, the states can be defined as I L V C in this fashion. Okay. Now, this can be printed displayed print sys A S B S C S D S u labels, y labels, x labels. So, this will print out the model of the system. Let us say, let us say we have paste So, the princess, what does the princess do? See that V naught, steady state V naught and IG have been calculated here. The princess actually does a pretty printing and displays it in a nice form, so that it is easily comprehensible. The A matrix is written down like this. This column is for uh, I L, this column is for V C. Okay, first row is the I L uh, row and the V C row. And you have likewise for the B matrix, you have 3 columns 1, 2, 3. The column corresponding to V G, the column corresponding to I Z that is output loading, column corresponding to D. Likewise, the C matrix, you have the V naught row, you can calculate V naught, I G row, I G output the D matrix all are 0 in this case. So, uh, you could also likewise uh, print system, the uh, small signal system A, B, C, D and then with the U labels, Y labels and X labels. So, that will give you the print of. So, this will give you the uh, uh, system in uh, the matrix form that is A B C D matrix form. You may also want to display the system uh, in the transfer function form. So, let us say 
transfer function in S domain. You would like to print the system uh, model in that form. So, let us say you have T f okay, T f as your system we will call as T f B T f boost converter. 0 pole gain form and convert to transfer function. We have the we have the system in state space form and you want the transfer function of V naught with respect to D. So, the B column should be column 3 B 3. C and the D matrix is 0. So, this would be the transfer function of the boost converter. You could probably have one more copy because we have used output as V naught. V naught because the C matrix that we have chosen is this 0 1 which is V naught and the input matrix column 3 which means D. So, by D. So, the transfer function is V naught by D. So, let us say this portion we copy paste and execute. You get the small signal model A, B, C, D and then you get V naught by D transfer function using the small signal model. Uh, this is a second order system as expected. Observe that there is a 0 on the right hand of the S plane. The boost converter has a 0 on the right of the S plane. You would have discussed that quite long ago while discussing the uh, boost converter uh, and because of this you cannot use the uh, Bode method or the Bode diagrams to do a design controller for the boost converter because it is a non minimum phase uh, uh, system. Uh, you have to use the root locus method. We will eventually do the root locus method of uh, designing the controller. Uh, so, this is the model of the uh, system. If you want to look at the root locus, uh, you can say R locus of T f B transfer function that we have just now obtained. So, you will uh, uh, get the uh, plot of the root locus in the S plane. Like this. So, you see that there are two poles here uh, which are uh, complex poles and they are on the left of the S plane. You can see that, you can zoom that and see. They are on the left half of the S plane. This is the imaginary axis. and this 0 here which is on the right of the plane and that is what I have been pointing out to you the 0 which is here and all boost converters will definitely have that and you will have to account for that in doing your design. Okay. So, you could 
get the frequency plot, Bode plot, all those analysis. So, once you are have you once you are in the MATLAB environment or you can do similar exercise in the octave environment too, you will be able to analyze it much more. Uh, uh, even though it is a second order system, when you want to do a manual hand calculation analysis, it is very, very cumbersome and especially when, so, when the systems become of order greater than 4 and uh, higher. Uh, you have to take the aid of uh, uh, computational environment like MATLAB or Octave uh, to ease the bulwark of uh, computation. So, uh, this uh, this M file that we have uh, written uh, is basically the model of the system. You got the model of the system from here on you will be able to analyze it and then probably uh, design controllers using this. So, to design controllers, we will be using the root locus method and uh, we will be using this model that we have just uh, uh, incorporated into an M file. Uh, later on, we will call this model and uh, uh, do a root locus uh, controller design. Okay. So, for now, we will stop at this point and then continue back to our whiteboard system. So, in the whiteboard here, we have been able to get the model of the plant, we have been able to get the transfer function of the plant, we have been able to take the model into a computational environment like MATLAB for the purposes of more analysis and ultimately to make a controller design for this particular plant. Okay. So, now from now on let us um, for some time look at how we go about developing a uh, controller uh, for a generic plant. So, the plant could be a, um, a non isolated buck converter, buck boost converter, a boost converter or it could be a flyback converter, one of the isolated converters or it could be any plant. The method is generic. So, therefore, uh, let us uh, focus our discussion uh, for some time now uh, to evolve a method uh, to design the controller. So, what is it that we want to do? We have with us the plant which is having a set of inputs, it is having a set of power inputs and outputs and as we are talking of DC DC converters, I shall uh, indicate it by these variables for other plants it could be different and we have a set of control inputs, information signals and a controlled output, an output to be controlled. This is the y and in this case y is v naught and this is the u and in this case it is equal to d. d is the control input to this plant and we have the transfer function v naught by d s. So, using this using this, we need to uh, do the following. Now, we are interested in having some reference. So, I am starting at the left portion of the board reference. What is the reference? Something that you want to control, we not. So, we need, we need to know what we what we need or what we desire to have. So, that is the reference. So, we will have a V naught reference say. We want the output V naught to match, we want the output V naught here of the actual system to match the reference or the desired value V naught desire 
that you would like to set here the set value. Uh, now, this reference needs to be compared needs to be compared with something and that is the measured value of v naught. So, the measured value of v naught is actually an information signal which is obtained by passing the actual v naught of the plant through a sensing circuitry and signal conditioning circuitry and it is diverted to the output signal output and that is fed back hmm? negative feedback we are uh, giving we are comparing the v naught reference with uh, v naught and the output of this comparator is the error and what is what is the value that we want associated with this error we want the error to be zero so if the error is zero then we know we are sure that v not is same as v not reference and that's what we want so, who is to make the error 0? The error is z made 0 by this block and this is called the controller. So, the error is fed to the controller and if there is an error, the controller will give a directive accordingly to the input that is the duty cycle in this case, which will process it and then control, uh, control the switching pattern of the converter inside this, because we are having the uh, a DC DC converter here. The switching pattern of the DC DC converter is uh, modified, the pulse width modulation is changed and therefore, the V naught value is changed, which is sensed and fed back again. The error is again checked and based on that error, the controller will take an action. So, ultimately in steady state, the error is supposed to be 0. It is the job of the controller to make the error 0 here. This is of course, the primary objective of this controller. So, for the moment, let us assume that this is a large signal model and what you have here is a large signal sensed and this large signal is compared with a large signal reference and the d here again is a large signal which is the uppercase d plus the d hat which is actually controlling this large signal model of the plant which is the actual plant so let us look at this as a whole large signal model for the moment and then later on we will um, make the divisions of what what portion the controller should control the small signal portion and the steady state portion and from where the steady state portion is going to come all those distinctions we will make clear later. For now, assume that this is all the controller is and all signals are large signals absolute values as is. Now, this controller has an output. So, this output is a control voltage. Now, this control voltage 
gets compared with some circuitry here. And what does that circuitry do? That circuitry changes this control voltage to a duty cycle value. So, this portion can either be taken into the plant or it could be outside. It could be a carrier a triangle waveform compared with VC and then convert it to a duty cycle. So, for the moment we are going to strictly focus on this block. Because we know how to do all these blocks, we will in fact do some simulation, design and simulation of all these blocks too later on. And of course, the whole complete system, so that you get a uh, insight into the entire uh, switched mode uh, DC DC converter system. Now, if you uh, look at this controller, let us say for the moment that there is a gain k for the controller. So, the gain k for the controller is written as V c by E. So, I will nomenclate the error in the same color which is blue E. So, if we want the error E to be 0, what, what should be the values of k? Apparently, it should be very, very high in finite. So, let us look at this equation slightly modified error E from the point of view of the error V c by k. This is a crucial equation and let me remove this. The requirement E should be equal to 0 at all instant of time, let us say. Very difficult to achieve that, but let us say at every instant of time E is equal to 0. What are the possibilities? Either V c equals 0 or this k gain tends to an infinite value. So, let us take it case by case. If you are making V c equal to 0, if you make V c is equal to 0, what does it imply? It implies you are grounding here. You are making a ground here. So, what does it imply? It implies that you have broken the loop, it is no longer in closed loop. So, you do not have a negative feedback closed loop at all. So, contr uh, controller has no work to do. So, this is not what we want. So, we do not want to take, take or cons even consider such an option. We definitely want the closed loop, we want to close this loop and we do not want this option. However, we still are interested in having this E equal to 0. So, let us take the other option of k tending to a very high value or infinite value. So, this is a plausible option, it has its troubles, it has its problems, 
but still when you make a a very very high value what it basically means is that whatever may be the value of control voltage the high value of k, uh, k tends to make e equal to 0 and v is equal to 0 v not ref and uh, v the feedback voltage are matched and if the feedback controlled signal is matched then v not here is at the desired value that we had set a mission accomplished so that's what we would want to do however this kind of an infinite k has its own problems problem 1 noise any system the moment you put a resistor let alone other active components semiconductors in fact if you see the dc dc converter will be composed of semiconductors capacitors resistors inductors magnetic so on and so forth noise is something which is unavoidable you have no control noise will be present noise will be present you cannot help it noise from your circuit, noise from a neighboring circuit which gets coupled to your circuit, all those will be present. So, even if there is a small noise, even if there is a small noise here, it will get amplified to a very, very large value and it will saturate the system and the system will and this being again in uh, closed loop feedback there will be nothing but noise in the system. So, this is one major problem that you need to tackle in this mode. So, noise we saw was one serious issue and what is the other problem? Problem number 2. The second problem is limits on input. You see the the voltage value here or the duty cycle here which are inputs to the system are limited in value. They do not have an unlimited width that is they do not they do not allow values to be taken from minus infinity to plus infinity that is not possible. So, also the control voltage V c they also cannot take values from minus infinity to plus infinity if it is supplying analog circuits probably you will see that vc varies from minus 15 volts to plus 15 volts duty cycle varies from 0 to 1 these are the practical limits so the signal V C signal and the D signal they all should be the absolute value should be within the limits that are allowed. But if you consider an infinite controller gain system, let me plot a graph here. 
let the x axis be the error E, let the y axis be V C. So, we are actually taking this on the x axis and this on the y axis and let us see what happens. So, if the gain, if I if I draw a line like this, what is the slope? So, this slope delta V C delta E is nothing but k. k which is the controller gain is the controller gain. So, if we make this k tend to a very large value infinite value towards infinity. So, what happens this whole line slope shifts like this and tries to align itself along the y axis. So, what happens even for a very small deviation in the error the value the operating point operating point can be anywhere on the imaginary axis or anywhere here on the imaginary axis. So, it could be so which means that V C can take on values from minus infinity to infinity if u or k is infinite. So, this is a possibility. However, in the practical situation, there are limits on the inputs. V c can take on values only up to power supply um, uh, voltage levels minus 15 to plus 15, minus 12 to plus 12, 0 to 15, 0 to 12, 0 to 5, 0 to 3.3, so on and so forth depending upon the nature of the uh, circuits used, components used and the duty cycle can take values only between 0 and 1. So, because of this, because that input is limited, you cannot have the whole uh, uh, real number line for V c allocated to it. So, it needs to have limits. So, let us say there is a limit on the positive side and the negative side as shown here saying that V c cannot go beyond this value. So, this would probably be a minus 15 volt value, this would be a plus 15 volt value if the power supply is a plus minus 15 volt. So, for such a case what happens? So, let us see what would happen if we have a limit. So, let us take a situation where k is a finite value not infinite is a finite value with a finite slope as given by this. So, this is k. So, look at these points of intersection critical points. This is some plus error limit this is a minus error limit. What 
what happens if the error crosses this limit if the error crosses this limit then you are on this portion of the curve which i am darkening yeah notice that for a change in error here you project it up you will see that there is no change in the error reflected on vc so for a delta e here delta vc is equal to 0 what does it imply whatever may be the change in error there is no effect on vc which means no closed loop operation if you take a situation here for a change in error here you would get definitely a change in vc so a change in error will result in a change in vc which will take control action on the uh, plant so therefore uh, you have closed loop operation uh, in the entire length of this region from plus limit e limit to minus e limit there will be a change in the control voltage for a change in error and therefore control action is possible again outside this limit for a change in delta e here you will get a change in delta vc equal to 0 because it is in this saturation limit zone okay so it is important for us to see that the system operating point on the errors are within this band within this band and that band is called the control band so what happens when you keep increasing k so as you start increasing k you will see that this moves in this fashion so you will see that you will see that the control band decreases now your control band is only so much as you further keep increasing it you will at k in uh, k tending to infinity it will merge with the y axis the gain curve will merge with the y axis and the control band will be zero zero minus to zero plus so which means that if there is even a small error it will go to plus saturation or minus saturation so this is a problem the system will come out of um, control it will always be in open loop it will not be in closed loop this is not a situation that we want so these are two problems which um, which you will encounter when you make k uh, a very high value towards infinity one is the noise problem and another is the input uh, level limits and we need to address these issues and we will do that in the next class and go forward in the design of the controller. Thank you.